Can I ask everyone to please stand in reverence of the Word of God? And as we pray, I want to read from Acts chapter 13, verse 36. It says here, For David, after he had served the purpose of God in his own generation, fell asleep and was laid with his fathers and saw corruption. Let's bow down our heads and let's pray. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the blessing of being part of a multi-generational church. Lord, thank you that this church, Lord God, you have entrusted us, this stewardship, Lord, to continually preach the gospel, to continually reach every family, every student, every community, and every nation. Father, I pray, Lord God, even for the preaching of your word this morning, Holy Spirit, anoint my lips. Holy Spirit, open our hearts, open our eyes so that we may see the vision and the mission that you have entrusted to us. In the most powerful name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. You may now take your seats. Again, for many of us, uh, we know this already. We are celebrating the 40 years of God's faithfulness in our church. And for our series, our campus series, this will actually be for the next four weeks. Commonly, when we, or usually when we do our campus series every year, we would do it for two weeks. For, but for this time, for this year, our leaders have decided, let's do this for weeks. And hindi lang to for the reason na mas mahaba lang, no? yung series natin, para mapag-usapan yung next generation and how we are called to reach out and to make disciples. But more than that, we want to convey this message once again and to remind us and to refresh us of this, this stewardship na, Lord, thank you, we can do Many other things, but Lord, thank you that this is the focus that you have entrusted our church. And my prayer and our prayer, your leaders, your pastors and missionaries is this, that it's not only us who will run this vision. And our prayer is that all of us as a church, by the grace of God and with the power of the Holy Spirit, we will continue to run the vision that God has given us 40 years and beyond. And so for this series, we're actually going to look at the life of David. Now, ang maganda po sa series na to, no, because it's four weeks, we, were actually, we will actually be able to see the life of David being a young person up until he became a king and up until he became the next the generation who will prepare the next generation. So I hope that we will not miss out on this. Sana po, no, every week we will really be expectant and excited as we study the life of David. The verse that we've read earlier in Acts chapter 13, uh, verse 36, it says there that David had served the purpose of God for his own generation. Now, it's a question to ask for ourselves. What does it look like for a life that has served the purpose of God in his own generation? If God was able to do it in the life of David, I believe God can also do that in our lives. God can also fulfill the purposes that he has planted, that he has deposited in each of our lives. That's why this message, I want to tell this to all of us. Yes, it's campus series, pero make no mistake, ito pong message na to is not only for young people. This message is not only for the students who are here right now, but this message is for all of us for two important reasons. Number one is this, all of us here, we have a next generation after us. Tama po ba? Yeah. So even if you are a student here, I'm seeing some of our uh, preteens. Nandito rin sila sa atin ngayon. They are joining us. Some of us here, high school, college student. Yes, you may think like, oh, ako yung pinakabata dito. But guess what? Even you're the youngest, meron na, ying, meron na ding mas bata sa'yo. There will be generations after us. For some of us here, you may be the older generation, but once in your life, you have been the next generation. And so again, this message is for each and every one of us. Second important reason is this. It's the Word of God that we are talking about. And the Word of God, para po ito sa ating lahat. 
It doesn't matter what our age is, doesn't matter what our background is, doesn't matter what our status is in life. The Word of God is for all people. Two important reasons that I hope will prepare our hearts for the Word of God. Allow me to read first. Samuel chapter 17, this will be our text for today. Now, yung first Samuel chapter 17, many of you, you're familiar with this story. Kasi ito po yung story, very popular story of David and Goliath. Okay, This is the action-packed scripture wherein David as a young boy was able to defeat the giant Goliath. Now, many of us, kahit hindi na po natin pakinggan tong preaching na to, we can already say kung ano yung nangyari. No? Alam natin na nanalo si David. David, of course. God, God, through His power and His grace, was able to uh, you know, give that victory over the life of David against Goliath. But for today, what we're actually gonna look at is this. We're not going to focus much on David and Goliath's story, but we're actually going to look at David as a young person. Okay? I hope you realize this. When uh, this happened in the life of David, he was actually a young boy, a young shepherd boy. Uh, the scholar said maybe around 13 to 15 years old. And so allow me to read starting in verse 12. If you have your Bibles with you, kindly open it. With me, and we're gonna read together verse 12. Now, David was the son on Ephratite of Bethlehem in Judah named Jesse, who had eight sons. In the days of Saul, the man was already old and advanced in years. The three oldest sons of Jesse had followed Saul to the battle. And the names of his three sons who went to the battle were Eliab, the firstborn, next to him, Abinadab, and the third, Shama. Verse 14. David was the youngest. The three eldest followed Saul, but David went back and forth from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. For 40 days, the Philistine came forward and took his stand morning and evening. Jesse said to David, his son, Take for your brothers an ephah of this parched grain and this ten loaves and carry them quickly to the camp to your brothers, also take these ten cheeses to the commander of their thousand. See if your brothers are well and brings, bring some token for them. So what's happening here? During this time, there was a battle between the armies of Philistine and Israel. During the time, yung kanilang uh, panlaban or what they call champion is Goliath himself. And so... They were taunting the army of Israel. It's like they were saying, okay, sino yung pangtatapat nyo sa kay Goliath? Sino pangtatapat nyo sa amin? If manalo kami, the Goliath and the Philistine army, you will have to serve us. You will have to submit to us. On the other hand, if ang Israel army naman, if they will be able to defeat Goliath, we will submit to you and we will um, be your servants. So I want you to imagine this. In the midst of chaos, when the whole army of Israel were so afraid of the enemies, David came into the story. You know, many of us, we would rather be in a situation na comfortable. Tama po ba? We would rather be in a situation na walang masyadong challenges or gulo. Di ba pag nagpe-pray naman tayo kay Lord, hindi naman tayo nagpe-pray, Lord, dalin mo ako sa magulong sitwasyon. Lord, gusto ko yung na-challenge ako. Di ba? Sana, di ba, may ganong mga prayers. But if we would try to notice it, we would usually pray, Lord, spare us. Lord, I pray that we would be healthy. Lord, I pray that, you know, um, uh, today will be a great day. We would rather be in those comfortable situations, but the plan of God in the life of David was different. It was in the midst of chaos that David came into the story. In fact, the, the scripture that we've read earlier, hindi pa nga po plano ni David pumunta doon. Napag-utusan lang siya. Naranasan na po ba natin yun, di ba? Some of our parents would say, Oh anak, bili ka mo. Di ba? Napag-utusan ka to do groceries. Ngayon kasi online na eh. No? Anak, ikaw mag-order sa Grab. Kailangan natin to, this and that and all. 
So David, in a way, napag-utusan lang naman talaga siya. Pero yung pinuntahan niya is a place of chaos. Again, I want you to imagine this. He was around 13 to 15 years old. Naalala niyo pa po ba yung age niya? <laughs> na 13 and 15 years old during that time ko anong ginagawa natin. Ako, I can still remember. I grew up in Sampaloc. So, most likely after school, pagdating ko ng bahay, I'll meet my friends already and then maglalaro na kami. Not much about things like this. But for David, he was entrusted of something. Okay? His father, Jesse, asked him to go to his eldest uh, to his brothers to bring uh, yung food, yung ration, kasi the father, the whole family knew that they were actually in war. You see, this young shepherd boy, David, obeyed his father and went to his brothers. Verse 20, David rose early in the morning and left the sheep with a keeper, took the provisions and went. As Jesse had commanded him, he came to the encampment as the host was going out to the battle line, shouting the war cry. Israel and the Philistines drew up for battle, army against army. David left the things in charge of the keeper of the baggage and ran to the ranks and went and greeted his brothers. As he talked with them, behold, the champion, the Philistine of God, Goliath by name, came up out of the ranks of the Philistines and spoke the same word as before and David heard him. David, as a young person, was asked by his father, Jesse, went to his, um, to brother, to his brothers faithfully. Uh, he has done what was asked of him. But also, more than that, we can see here early on in verse 20, it says there that early morning he left, he went, he woke up and left the sheep with the keeper. Now, why is this so important? Even if he had to run an errand for his father, he made sure the sheep were still well cared for because David also was a faithful shepherd. Now, why is this so important? As we all know, especially if we will read chapter 16, David was the chosen king of Israel. At an age of 13 to 15 years old, he was already anointed as the king of Israel. And so many of the things that God is doing in his life as a young person is actually, was actually a preparation for him. And so kita pa lang natin, ngayon pa lang sa buhay ni David, as the next generation, as a young person, God is already doing something in his life. And so kahit na maliit na bagay na napag-utusan lang si David, David was faithful. David was obedient. For young people here, sometimes we look at the things na binibigay sa atin or pinapagawa sa atin as something na ano bang magagawa nito sa buhay ko? Diba? Parang minsan naiistorbo pa tayo with the things that uh, we're doing. Maybe you're, uh, you're with your friends or kailangan mong i-move talaga yung schedule mo just to obey our parents and all. But guess what? Even the smallest things that God allows to happen in our lives, we can actually realize this. In the future, we would say, Oh Lord, thank you. Na even as a young person, tinuturuan mo na ako ng patience. Yeah. Lord, thank you that even as a young person, kaya pala noon, dati pa lang, Lord, God, tinuturuan mo na ako to respect other people. Lord, thank you na kaya pala nung bata pa lang ako, you are already teaching me hard work. You know, many things that God is doing in our lives, even as a young person, we can be sure of this, it's actually also a preparation. In David, in the life of David, God has allowed that to happen. And so David was faithful, David was obedient, and so the battle continues. And so pagdating ni David doon, dahil narinig niya na that Israel and Philistine was at war, and he has been hearing about this Goliath. So when he was there, obviously, medyo curious din siya. Sino ba tong giant na to? Sino ba tong um, a Philistine, our uncircumcised Philistine who's defying the name of God? I want to read that in... Chapter 17, verse 26, one of the 
most important, I believe, um, statement in the Bible, especially in the life of David, when he said this, For he, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the what? Of the living God. What David was trying to say is this. This is not just a battle between Philistines and Israel, but this battle, the, the Philistine army is defying the name of a holy God. This war that is happening, it's defying, it's mocking the Lord that we are worshiping. Kaya si David, during the time, who, during the time, who is this Philistine? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Parang nagkakaroon siya ng, kumbaga, uh, discontent and anger in his heart that he, that he has to face this giant that they were talking about. You know, in desperation, another character in this story is King Saul. He was the king during that time, meaning to say he was the, the one leading the Israel army. And in desperation, dahil lahat sila takot na, ultimo yung king na naglilid sa kanila, and the whole army, they were afraid, they were dismayed. In desperation, nagbigay na ng reward si King Saul. Not only one reward, but three rewards. He offered bribe, uh, cash award, a princess. Okay? Kung sino makatalo kay Goliath, ipapakasal ko sa, sa anak ko. Also, a task, tax exemption. Now, what's happening here is this. And by the way, this is a very sad reality, especially in this story. King Saul... The army of Israel, they were very afraid, intimidated, and dismayed. At this very point, hindi pa nangyayari yung battle, Goliath already defeated the Israel army. You know why? Goliath defeated the Israel army by fear alone. Tinakot pa lang ni Goliath, wala na. Tinont pa lang ni Goliath, Yung Israel army and King Saul, they were intimidated. They were dismayed already. They were disarmed for them to do what God has called them to do. Church, next generation, current generation, older generation, the devil, Satan, is doing the same strategy up until today. He's putting fears in our hearts. He's putting many lies in the minds of all people. And the effect, the result is we are being disarmed to do what God has called us to do. It's the same strategy, fear. There are different giants that we are all facing. In the life of David, King Saul, the elder brothers, and the whole army of Israel were the older generation. And I want you to get this. They were supposed to be the ones fighting the enemies. They were supposed to be the ones in the front line. They were supposed to be the ones honoring the name of the Lord and fighting for the honor of God. And yet, they were disarmed and they were in fear and they were dismayed. Sadly, Many of these things are also happening in our time today. I have read this article about the Philippines. Many of us were familiar that one of the greatest problems of our country that we are facing is this, poverty. But in this article, it was actually different. In 2022, it was written, it says here, the author said this, if ever there is a crisis, the Philippines must urgently confront, not only to confront, but urgently confront, is the utterly paramount, is the deteriorating state of our families and children. It's no longer just poverty, but it's the deteriorating state of our families and children. Actually, ang haba po ng article na to, no? kasi marami dito, puro statistics, and they gave us a, a, a picture of the X number of years na nag-increase talaga numbers of children being born out of wedlock. Numbers of children who were born without a parent. 
without a father who will raise them, without a mom that will nurture them, without a family that will help them, that will guide them, that will lead them to the Lord. Very sad story. Now, I'm not here to, you know, para pagalitan po tayo or what, but I'm presenting this reality because this is what is happening. And just like David, my prayer is this, we will have that holy anger and discontent in our hearts. Lord, we cannot let this happen in our nation. Lord, we cannot just allow this and not do anything while our children, our orphans are becoming orphans, no one raising them. It's the social media raising them. It's other people parenting them. We will not allow that. I hope that we will have that burden in our hearts time and time again. The Bible is a lot, has a lot of stories of different generations and how God will use the different generations to raise His people, to advance His kingdom, to live for His glory and to exalt His name. Sometimes, you know, and I believe many of us here, we would hear this outside. I have friends, uh, my age right now is 33. And so many of our, my friends are, my family na, may mga kids na and all. Some are also still single. And yung conversation na, and this is really disheartening. Some of them, they don't believe in marriage anymore. Try na lang yung una natin. Wala namang mawawala. Leave in na lang tayo. Marriage is just a paper. Tapos baka maghiwalay din naman. It's sad. What's happening in our world right now is as if it is not God who designed and created marriage. It just became a what? A law? A principle? But we have to realize this as people of God and we know this. We have to know this because it's in the word of God. Marriage is from God. Marriage was designed by God. It is not us who defines it. And by the grace of God, I'm saying this because if it's God who designed it, and, and, and so therefore it's God who will prepare us, equip us, and provide for us. I know it's not easy. I am not yet a parent, but I have my parents with me and I'm seeing them. I, I see how they would pray hard, how they would sometimes struggle in raising us up. Dahil ang babait po namin. Mga kapatid ko dito. But I, I could just imagine the hardships, the difficulties that the parents are going through. Sometimes, I, I love what Pastor Kick said uh, earlier in our 9 a.m. service, sometimes parents become anxious. Totoo po ba yon? Sometimes parents can become anxious in raising their children. Lord, saan ko ba kukunin to? Lord, paano kapag mapariwara yung anak ko? Lord, what... What does the future hold for my children or for my future apos? Apo, uh, Tito Victor, lucky to kasi. May apo na rin si Tito Victor. But sometimes we can be so anxious. But guess what? We can always come to God and allow Him to work in us, to lead us, so that we can lead the next generation as well. Second also, example of how fear can creep in into our hearts and into our lives is this. The effect is self-love, self-preservation, self-actualization. It's all about the self. You know? Minsan, nakala natin, oh, wala namang maapektuhan eh. Desisyon ko naman to. Buhay ko naman to. This is what we will hear in our world today. But let me tell this to all of us. Whatever we do, whatever our actions would be and our decisions would be, there will always be someone and people that will be affected by it. Whether we like it or not. Why? We are people, we are relational people. Our lives will affect others. Sometimes, not necessarily our families, although they're the closest one. But sometimes even classmates, kaibigan natin, even our very own nation are affected by the decisions that we make and the way we live out our lives. And so yes, I am all for self-love, but that's not enough. The love that we need ultimately is the love of God. 
Oh yes, of course, we need to take care of ourselves. Oh yes, of course, we need to take care of our well-being, our mental health. It is our responsibility. But make no mistake, ultimately, it's the love of God who will complete us. Ultimately, it's the love of God that will restore us. Ultimately, it's the love of God that will give us purpose in life. Church, allow me to encourage each and every one of us. Let us not move in fear, just like what happened to Saul and Israel. Three questions that I want all of us to reflect on. Maybe as you go home, maybe for this week, however long it would take for you. As you reflect on these questions, I want you to talk to God and ask Him, how are we living our lives today? Kamusta po yung buhay natin? Is God part of our daily life? Or are we so consumed of the things of the world that God is just a compartment sa puso natin? But the rest, tayo na bahala. Is Jesus really the Lord of our lives? Question, second question, what are usually the reasons behind our actions and decisions? Is it selfish gains or to get more of this and to have more of this? What are the, the reasons in making those decisions? Do we take a great consideration of the next generation in the way we live our lives? When we try to answer the second question, kaduktong po niyan is, parte ba nung mga decisions natin is the next generation? Parte ba nung pag-build natin sa platform natin, sa life that we want, that we are praying for God to uh, give to us, parte ba nun? May vision ba tayo for the next generation? Not only for our own life, but for those people who will uh, come after us. David, as faithful as he is, as courageous as he is, he experienced the effects of the actions of the older generations. Let us look at some of his encounters. Three people. First is this, his brother, his older brother. Verse 28. Now Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spoke to the men, Eliab's anger was kindled against David. He said, Why have you come down? And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know your presumption. And the evil of your heart, for you have come down to see the battle. Here comes David. He came to his brothers. Daladala niya yung mga pinadala ng tatay nila. And he wants to check on them. But here's his brother, Elia, was saying, Ba't ka nandito? Anong ginagawa mo dito? Galit na galit siya. Now, there are three things that we can see or we can think of that kung bakit siya nagalit. Number one is this. First, he was angry because he felt David was an insignificant person, worthless person, he had no, and had no right to speak up. Obviously, he was 13 years old or 15 years old. Pupunta ka sa gera, pupunta ka sa laban. And so Elia was saying, oh, ba't ka nandito? Hindi ka dapat nandito, dapat nandun ka sa bahay. Anong ginawa mo? Sino nag-aalaga dun sa sheep natin? Okay. He thought that David was insignificant worthless and had no right to speak up. What else? Eliab thought he knew the motive of David. Wow. And I told this in our 9 a.m. service. You know, when I prepared for this message, there was a lot of repenting that happened. Naparepent din po ako. I had to sorry to the Lord. I have to say sorry to God. Because many times I was also like this. I thought I knew the motive of the person. And so I already have a judgment. And I so already have a, you know, preconceived notion, ah, ganito tong tao na to. Ah, ito yung gagawin ng tao na to. And now, this is not just for the next generation. Madalas, I think, no, mas ganun tayo sa mga bata kasi sometimes we think, ah, mas marami na akong alam. Diba? Napanagdaanan ko na rin yan. But actually, it also applies to all ages. Sometimes we look at that also to our peers or sometimes to the older also, 
He thought he knew the motive of David, but let me tell this to all of us, it is only God who knew our hearts, who knows the motive of our hearts, not us. Elia was himself greatly afraid of the enemies. And so, the last thing that he would want to hear is, dahil kung takot na takot na siya, is for other person to say, hindi, tapangan mo lang yung sarili mo. E si David, yun yung sinasabi niya sa Israel army. Ba't kayo natatakot? This Philistine is defying the name of the Lord. And so he was so angry about that. Sino ka ba? Bakit mo sasabihin sa amin na lumaban kami? That was the first encounter. Second is this, the army of Israel. Most likely, they were laughing and mocking David, just like his elder, uh, eldest bro- the eldest brother. Third encounter is this, King Saul to David. Verse 31, when the words that David spoke were heard, they repeated them before Saul, and he sent for him. David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him, because of this giant, your servant. David was telling, uh, talking about himself. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, look at this, you are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are but a youth, and he has been a man of war from his youth. Saul, on the other hand, not just said it, but he thought that David was no match to Goliath. You are not able to go against this Philistine. Okay? Because Goliath was a skillful warrior. In short, what we can see here is this. Saul was looking at the battle purely in the natural. Purely in the out, outward terms lang. But I want you to be reminded of this. They were the people of God. They know about who God is. They know the God that they worship and yet... Even as the king, he saw it in the natural and not in the spiritual. And sometimes we can be like that also. We base our decision and assumptions with the things that we see, but not on the things that God is telling us and revealing to us spiritually. And I believe, church, I did not say this earlier in the 9 a.m. service, but I believe it's the time for us, all generations, to ask God, Lord, awaken our hearts. Lord, open our eyes that we may see, not only in the natural, but most importantly, in the spiritual. It's true, the Bible tells us that we are in a spiritual battle. But sometimes, the things that are happening is not what we see with our naked eyes. We need our hearts to discern what the Holy Spirit is doing in our midst. What the Holy Spirit is doing in the next generation in our nation and the nations to come. You see, not only to Eliab, not only his encounter with the army, not only his encounter with, uh, with King Saul, in chapter 16, very quickly, there was actually that story, Samuel and Jesse. Samuel was the prophet that God has called to go to Jesse and to look for the next king. Okay, so si Samuel, as the prophet, pumunta siya kay Jesse. Okay, sabi niya kay Jesse, Jesse, nasa yung mga anak mo? And so Jesse presented all his sons, one by one. Okay, sabi ni Samuel, ah, okay, ito na siguro yung king. But the Lord will tell, the Lord will tell him, no, that's not the king. Until all the sons, so oh, ilat dumaan, so wala sa kanila. And then Samuel asked Jesse, Jesse, meron ka pa bang isang anak? Ay, oo, meron pa. Kaso kasi nagtetend siya ng sheep. O, oh, pakitawag. So dumating si David. And then the Lord told Samuel, that's the next king. You know, in that story, even his own father, the father of David, forgot about him. He was not seen. He was not acknowledged. Pagsasamasamahin po natin lahat, ng encounter ni David with the older generation, I have one word for it. Offense. He has been offended, not only once, but many times in his life. Not even when he's older, but even during when he was younger. He had been offended many times. 
And yet, the Lord allowed all this, those things to happen because God has a plan and a purpose for his life. He was overlooked. He was mocked. He was looked down. But you know what? God still has a plan. First truth that I want all of us to get is this. Every generation has its own failings. Kaya nga sabi ko po kanina, hindi naman po ako nandito para pagalitan tayo. Because the reality, the truth is this. All of us have failed. All of us have failed. In fact, even while we are still here on earth, we will still continue to fail. And so, this is not a matter of blaming whose generation's fault it is. Hindi po ta, and, and I'm saying this because in social media, in the world that we live in right now, it's always about the wars between generations. Time and time again. Ah, ganito kasi kayo sa generation. That's not what God wants for us. We have to acknowledge all of us have failed. Yeah. And sometimes we will still fail. It is for us now to humble ourselves before God and say, Lord, we're sorry. Lord, we're sorry that we have neglected the calling, the plans that you have set before us. Next is this. Although we are all flawed, Although we are all sinful, although we will still fail, the good news for us is this. Despite all of these things, God can still and, still and will use us. Every generation plays a part in the lives of the next generation. In the life of David, yes, Saul already have that assumption. Dito mananalo. Pero sige. In verse 37, I'm not going to read it anymore, in 38, the story was, Saul agreed, oh, sige, the Lord be with you. Now, take this armor. Try mo tong armor ko. On the other hand, David said, okay, sige, so suotin ko yung armor mo. He had the sword, he has the breastplate, all these things, and so he tried it on. What can we see here? Despite the flaws of King Saul and him being afraid, he still gave an opportunity to David. God still used him. All of us here, sometimes we just need to show up. All of us here, sometimes we just need to and take the risk to empower and equip the young people. With all these encounters, that David had in his teenage years. The question is this, how did he respond? Anong naging response ni David? Number one, to his father, Jesse. Even though he was overlooked, he was still obedient to his father. He was still a faithful shepherd. Kasi yun yung inentrust sa kanya eh. At his early age, okay Lord. And ito yung sinabi ng tatay ko, I'll be obedient. Second, to his brother, Eliab. Even though Eliab got angry at him and said hurtful words, David did not let him and the hurtful words to hinder him. David remained confident and determined to fight against Goliath, not for his honor or for anyone, but for the honor of the name of the Lord. David did that not to please others, Young people, I'm talking to all of us. Don't live your life to please others. Nakakapagod. Nakakapagod. It's gonna be a never-ending cycle of anong isipin ng iba? Anong tingin sa akin ng iba? Guess what? What matters is this, how God looks at you. What matters is this, how God identifies you. What matters is this, the purpose that God has placed in your life. Don't live to please other people. To King Saul, what was the response of David? Even though David, uh, Saul thought that he, he was no match to Goliath, David responded with respect. Napansin niyo ba yon? He still accepted it. Sige, itatry ko yung armor mo. Tatry ko pa rin. But after that conversation, he also said, hindi talaga siya para sa akin. Masyadong mabigat. I cannot fight Goliath with this armor. 
It was not out of pride. In fact, it was out of respect. Because in the first place, tinray niya pa rin. Ginawa niya pa rin. So even though David was grievously offended by these people, he still stood on his ground and his motivation was the honor of the name of the Lord. David, as a next generation, was respectful to the older generations. Despite all these things, that had happened. Still, for him, it was for the honor of the name of the Lord. As an application, I have three things for all of us. Number one is this, live for the honor of God. This is for all of us, for all generations. Live for the honor of God. In our world today, there will be a lot of things that will be offered to us. Live for this. Live for your uh, company. Live for your success. Live for your boyfriend or girlfriend. Live while uh, achieving these dreams. Live for your nation. Some of it are good. Some of it are noble. But nothing has eternal value than living for the honor of God. Living for the honor of God has eternal value and has eternal impact. Second is this, do not miss out on God. Do not miss out on what God is doing in your midst. Sometimes, Lord, sakit na nahulo ko sa bata na to. Ano ang gagawin ko? <laughs> Ask God, Lord, give me patience. Lord, give me compassion. Lord, give me love. For some of us here, it's not as parents. Some of us is in our workplace. Ay, mga yan, bakit ganito na sila mag Bakit ganito? Lord, ano nangyayari? Minsan nakala natin, basta sinabi mo, gagawin na nila. Yun pala, kailangan i-walk through mo sila. Dahan-dahanin mo. Tsatsagain mo. I-explain. I-train. Yung younger uh, workers mo. Lord, patience. Lord, compassion. Lord, wisdom. Lord, give me leadership. Don't miss out on God, on what He is doing in and through your life, dahil lang hindi komportable. Dahil lang, ang sakit sa ulo. Dahil lang, you will have to go the extra mile. Don't miss out on God. Lastly, for all of us here, with all these things, we are to rely on God alone. Not on our own strength, not on our own wisdom, not on our own ability, but on God alone. You know, in the story of David, and we're going to see this for the next uh, three more Sundays, we will see how the Lord would continually guide David even in the most difficult time of his life. It was not always success. In fact, I think yung life ni David talagang, wow, Lord, and dami niya talagang pinagdaanan and yet he was able to endure, to fulfill the purposes of God in his life. I believe only for one reason, because he relied on God. And it's going to be the same thing for all of us. We need God in our lives. We need God in the mundane things. We need God in our big decisions. We need God as we parent our children. We need God as we uh, go into the campuses and disciple them. We need God to guide us and lead us. We need His Spirit to be upon us. David in his life when he was anointed as a king, a mighty rushing wind was upon him and the Holy Spirit rest on him. That's why on a, at his early age, the Holy Spirit has been empowering him, leading him, helping him. And it's going to be the same thing for us. The same Holy Spirit that worked in the life of David is the si still the same Spirit that works in us. Live for the honor of God. Don't miss out on what God is doing in and through your life. Rely on God for the rest of our lives. Amen? Can I ask everyone to please stand and we're going to pray. spot on our heads. Lord, thank you for your word for us. Lord, we repent of the many times that we have moved in fear 
just like Saul, just like the Israel army. At hindi namin naisip ano yung magiging epekto nito to the next generations. Lord, we repent. We are sorry, Lord. Especially in the difficult times, Lord, that we have given up on life. Thank you that you are faithful to forgive us. And now that we have heard of your message, I believe you are infusing a new faith in us, fresh faith that we can run with, again, not only for ourselves, but for the generations to come. For other people who are surrounding us, our families, our co-workers, our classmates, for the students here, our friends, other people who still doesn't have a relationship with you. Lord, give us faith. Break down fears in our hearts. Break down pride in our hearts, Lord, that we may be able to fulfill the purposes that you have set before. look up here very quick I want to say this God already has a purpose in our lives nakaset na yan but it's a matter of us discovering it and walking with God and relying on Him to fulfill that purposes in us meron na pong dineposito ang Panginoon sa atin It's a matter of us surrendering to Him, humbling ourselves before Him, and saying yes to Him. Saying yes to be used by Him. Saying yes to be sent by Him. Saying yes to follow Him wherever He would lead us. Saying yes to do whatever He has called us to do. Even if the situation is uncomfortable. Even if it's in the midst of I want to encourage you with that church God already has put that purpose in your life pursue God pursue His purposes and you will be amazed how He would unfold the plans that He has in and through your life Lord thank you for your word for us I pray for my brothers and sisters Lord Lord, let us be a blessing to the next generation. Even to the generations na hindi na namin naabutan. Even to the generations na hindi na namin makikita. Lord, by faith, the things that we are planting right now, the things that we are doing right now, Lord, it will affect, hopefully for the better, betterment of the next generations. And most importantly, so that they too will choose to follow you as we have followed you. Lord, thank you. We bless your name. In Jesus' name, amen.